Hi there, mathematicians. Let's get started with our first section of Unit 1, all about points, lines, and planes. All right, just to get familiar with the notation, the first digit always represents the chapter and unit number. The next digit always refers to the section within the chapter, or, and the last digit always refers to the day. Okay, our objectives for this first section is that legends will be able to define space by naming points, lines, and planes. Also, be able to name segments and rays. All right, let's get started with asking or answering the question, what is space? Well, it's a boundless three-dimensional area containing all points, lines, and planes. All right, so this leads us to our first core concept, what is a point? So a point refers to a specific location, it has no size, it's usually represented by a dot, and we use capital letters to name. Make sure your capital letters are printed uppercase letters. Here are some examples. So if I were to name the yellow dot, I can name it with a capital D, printed D. and I make an emphasis on printed D and printed capital letters because later you're going to learn what scripted capital letters represent, which is different than these capital letters. So if I were to identify any dot or point in space, I name it with a capital letter. All right, so this is our first of three undefined terms of geometry. All right, let's talk about the second of three undefined terms of geometry. So our next course concept is what is a line? Well, a line is an infinitely extending one-dimensional figure that does not curve. So we have straight path. In other words, has no thickness, extends forever, And we usually name our lines with a lowercase letter, and it's scripted, so in other words, cursive, or two points on the line. So let's take a look at this image. Here we have two points on the same line, so point A, point B, and then we see this little lowercase scripted K. So that's also there to help us name this line. So we can name any line with a lowercase scripted letter. We can also write the word line out with that lowercase scripted letter. Or you can just leave the lowercase scripted letter by itself. Either way, you can name a line this way. You can also name any two points on the line, the capital letters. But make sure you include the line symbol above those two letters. If you don't have that line symbol above those two letters, then you're naming something completely different, which we'll learn about later. You can also rearrange the letters. So naming any line with two points in any order helps you name a line, two letters only. And that's because three letters helps us name something else. So only name with two letters. So any two points on a given line can name the line. All right, our third and final undefined term of geometry is a plane. So what is a plane? Well, a plane is a flat two-dimensional surface that extends forever in all directions. So it's a flat surface, has no thickness, and extends forever. And we can name it by a capital letter, and it's usually scripted capital letter. Or you can choose any three nonlinear points in the plane. So let's take a look at an example. Here we have a plane, and usually we sketch planes just any uh, four-sided figure quadrilateral. And then you can see points contained inside the uh, plane. Here we have point A, B, and C. So you can see that they're not in the same line, so there's no single line that I can get to pass through all three of those points at the same time. So we call that non-collinear, not in the same line. So you can name those three points, and that names the plane. So you can include the word plane with the three letters, or if you drop the word plane and just write the three letters, that's fine as well. 
or you can find the uppercase or capital scripted letter. It's usually located in one of the corners, and that also names the plane. All right, let's practice naming the following figures. All right, we're going to start with our line. We have four points on the line, and we also have this lowercase scripted letter. So you can choose any two points, or you could choose your scripted letter to name. So let's start with our scripted letter. That's one name. We've got points W and X, and you can rearrange those letters to have a different name, XW. Or you could pick X and Y, rearrange, and have another name. You could choose Y and Z, or you could rearrange. So in total, for any two points, we have a total of 12 different names. One thing that's very important to not forget is that you must have the line symbol above the two letters when you're naming a line with the arrows. If the arrows are missing, you're naming something completely different. All right, next we have a plane. How could we name this plane? Well, you could choose to name using the capital scripted letter, which we see in the corner here. So we could say plane P. Or we could also say plane XYZ. So any combination of the three non-collinear points also names the plane. So we have a total of six different names for this figure. Alright, let's look at example one together. Part A, give two other names for line PQ and plane R. Here's our image. Find PQ, here it is. This dotted portion of the line helps us realize that this line is passing through the plane, it's not contained in the plane. Super important. So two other names for PQ. We could rearrange and say QP. And to name our R, plane R, we can name any three nonlinear points contained inside this plane. So I could say SVP, I could say SVT, I could say SPV, um, so any combination of three non-collinear points, I could say all four of these as well, as long as you have at least three. Alright, so looking for ex explanations that look similar to these, so pause the video here, take a moment to capture these ideas in your notes. Alright, so here's a summary of all our three undefined terms, points, lines, and planes. Details matter, so how you name points, symbols, how many letters you include to name, all the details within these three undefined terms are super important. So <clears throat> take note of how to name, how to identify, and how to draw these three undefined terms. All right, some additional core concepts. We have a lot of vocabulary in this first section. In geometry, terms that can be described using known words such as point, or line are called defined terms. So let's go through our defined terms for geometry. First we've got segment and ray. The definitions below um, are going to include line AB written as AB with the symbol on top and points AB. So let's take a look at what a segment means. So a segment, line segment AB or segment AB written with again we've got a symbol above check out this symbol what's missing compared to our line symbol hopefully you note that there are no arrows that matters when you have no arrows at the end of your segment bar that's representing part of the line in other words a segment so if you name a line, make sure you have the arrows. If you name a segment, make sure you do not include the arrows. And it consists of endpoints A and B, and all the points on line AB that are between points A and B. Note that segment AB can also be named BA. Rearrange the letters. So here's the endpoint A, here's endpoint B, so we want all the points in between that we may not be able to see or name, so this would be considered a segment. Alright, let's talk about array, array AB written as 
two letters A and B. What's notice, noticeable about this symbol compared to the previous two symbols? This one only has one arrow. Super important. When you have one arrow and then one end point, so non-arrow end, you're talking about array. And you always name it by the end point is the letter underneath the part of the symbol that looks like an end point. And then any other letter on the opposite side of the end point can be named, and you would include that underneath the arrow. Now you can rearrange. So if this is the end point B, and then it goes off towards the left, in this case, and A is over here on the opposite side of the end point. So how would I name it this ray? I would say ray B underneath the end point part of the symbol and A underneath the arrow part of the symbol. This matters. Very, very important. They are different rays. These are not the same rays. They have different endpoints and then different going in different directions, which is the obvious part. All right, now you have opposite rays, which is if a point C lies on line AB between A and B, then ray CA and ray CB are opposite rays. So here's point C, and so I can name a ray going in the direction towards the right, or I can name a ray going in the direction to the left. Again, different rays, but together on the same line means they are considered opposite rays. So let's make some connections here. Segments and rays are collinear, in other words, when they lie on the same line. So opposite rays are collinear. We can also say that line segments and rays are coplanar when they lie on the same plane. All right, so let's take a look at our second example. Give another name for segment GH. So another name for GH is just rearrange the letters so we can say segment HG. Again, super important to include your symbol, the correct symbol for the figure. So in this case, a segment means I have no arrows on either end. So I'm talking about a segment, and I can name it in any um, order of letters. All right, part B, name all rays with endpoint J, and then which of these rays are opposite rays? Well, rays with endpoint J are ray JE. So here's J, the endpoint. I can go this direction and name a ray with point E. Make sure your symbol is going in the right direction and it is above the right letters. Or I could name from J to G going off this direction, and this is how I would name that ray. And then G to F, named like this, or J to H, named like this. Now, the pair of opposite rays with endpoint J are going to be JE and JF. So here's J. So JE is an opposite ray with JF. Or I can say that JG and JH are opposite rays. Again, opposite rays are collinear, so they have to be on the same line. All right, so here's where I want you to pause the video. So I'm going to expect you to try these on your own. So take a pause, try these on your own, and then hit play again to see if you got them right. All right, there's your answers with explanations. Check your work make corrections, and come in with clarifying questions if you made any mistakes. All right, that's all for today's lesson. Which image here resonates with you after your first day of school? See you in class.